If we think about uh, cetaceans, the first images that spring to mind are the ones of fully aquatic uh, animals, like this uh, humpback whale here. So uh, hydrodynamic body, sometimes a very large size. The forelimb that is transformed into a, a flipper, no more hind limbs. And then the end of the tail that is bearing uh, a caudal fluke. But the story of cetaceans uh, started with small four-limbed uh, animals. Indeed, whales originated more than 50 million years ago from uh, small hooved mammals the size of uh, a dog. Paleontologists discovered many of these early whales in India and Pakistan, and these quadrupedal animals gradually acquired uh, adaptations to life in the water, but they retained the ability to move on land, so they were uh, amphibious. For example, you have here uh, Myacetus, one of these nicely preserved uh, early amphibious whales. Amphibious whales migrated westward uh, from southern Asia to the northern coast of Africa, and from there they made the travel to North America. Uh, unfortunately, this part of the story is not so well uh, understood, mostly due to the fragmentary fossil records on both coasts of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so many questions are unanswered. When did these early whales migrate to North America? Which path did they take uh, for that? What were the body adaptations that allowed them to make it to the other side? This is something that is still a mystery, but a new discovery that we recently made may provide some clues. This all started in 2011 when, during a field expedition in the Pisco Basin on the southern coast of Peru, we discovered the skeleton of a new whale. During the excavation, we quickly realized that this was a quadrupedal whale and it was dated from nearly 43 million years. With such geological age, we have an animal that is the oldest for the new world and this is also the most complete quadrupedal whale skeleton outside India and Pakistan. So this is a key discovery to investigate uh, a crucial stage in the early whale evolution and dispersal. Let's have a closer look at Peregocetus pacificus. This animal was still capable of bearing its own weight uh, on land. How do we know that? First, the sacral vertebrae were still fused together. The pelvis was tightly attached to the, to the sacrum. Then the, the forelimb and the hindlimb were awfully similar to the ones of uh, Myacetus. And finally, tips of uh, the fingers and toes were bearing small hooves. So it could still walk the rocky coasts of nowadays Peru. But Peregocetus was also a good swimmer. It probably used its tail for propulsion. Unfortunately, we didn't find the last tail vertebrae, so we cannot tell if uh, there was a caudal fluke in Peregocetus, but the anatomy of the first tail vertebrae is reminiscent of those of semi-aquatic mammals like beavers and otters. So Peregocetus uh, also had long toes on large feet and those were most likely webbed. So undulations of its tail and strokes of its hind limb in a way somewhat similar to otters uh, most likely helped Peregocetus to cross the South Atlantic during the Middle Eocene. Um, at that time, the distance between Africa and South America was two times shorter than uh, nowadays, and a sea surface current was running from Africa to South America. These two features most likely helped Peregocetus' ancestors to cross the South Atlantic. And then from South America, later whales migrated to the north and reached uh, North America. Some of the descendants of these quadrupedal whales, the basilosaurids, uh, including Dorhodon and Basilosaurus, will later dramatically reduce their hind limbs. They will mostly rely on uh, the caudal fluke for uh, propulsion in uh, the water. And these are so the, the first fully aquatic uh, cetaceans. They will give rise to the two modern lineages of cetaceans. Uh, the baleen whales and their relatives, the mysticeti, and on the other side, the, the echolocating tooth whales, uh, the dolphins, porpoises, sperm whales, and beaked whales. <laughs>